final matters. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 is a truth that is certainly illustrated in the life of David after his sin with Bathsheba. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. David had slept with Bathsheba, a married woman. Bathsheba later discovered she was pregnant and informed David. The king's reaction was to try to conceal his sin. David directed Uriah to return to him from the battlefield. Bathsheba's husband dutifully responded to David's summons, and David sent him home, hoping Uriah would sleep with Bathsheba and thus cover for the pregnancy. Instead of following David's orders, Uriah slept in the palace servants' quarters, refusing to enjoy a respite with Bathsheba while his men in the battlefield were still in danger. The next night, Uriah did the same thing, demonstrating integrity in stark contrast to David's lack thereof. It became clear that David and Bathsheba's adultery could not be concealed in this manner. David devised a second, more sinister plan. He directed his military commander Joab to position Uriah on the front lines of battle and then purposefully withdraw from him, leaving Uriah vulnerable to enemy attack. Joab carried out the order and Uriah was slain in battle. Bathsheba married David after her mourning period and gave birth to a son. But 2 Samuel chapter 11 verse 27 states, The thing David had done displeased the Lord. When the child of David and Bathsheba was born, the Lord sent the prophet Nathan to confront David. Nathan used a parable. A rich man slew a poor man's only sheep despite having many flocks of his own. David, a one-time shepherd, was so angered by the story, which he thought was true, that he answered, As surely as the Lord lives, the man who did this must die. He must pay for that lamb four times over, because he did such a thing and had no pity. Nathan then pointed to David and said chillingly, You are the man. David was the one who committed the sin, and his family would face the consequences in the form of ongoing violence. David repented, and Nathan said, The Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die, but because by doing this you have shown utter contempt for the Lord, the son born to you will die. The child did pass a week later and David's family faced additional hardship in the years that followed. David had to suffer the consequences of his actions. God did forgive him, but David had to live with the consequences of his sin for the rest of his life. As we near the end of David's life, we see the consequences of his sins not only on his family, but on the entire nation. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Number 1. Absalom's Futile Rebellion 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 11 Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will raise up adversity against you from your own house, and I will take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this son. Nathan had warned David that evil would infiltrate his house following his sin with Bathsheba. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 19 When David saw that his servants were whispering, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said to his servants, is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. It didn't take long for disasters to strike David's family. His infant son died first. 2 Samuel chapter 13 verses 1 to 15 After this, Absalom the son of David had a lovely sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon the son of David loved her. 
Amnon was so distressed over his sister Tamar that he became sick, for she was a virgin. And it was improper for Amnon to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimea, David's brother. Now Jonadab was a very crafty man, and he said to him, Why are you, the king's son, becoming thinner day after day? Will you not tell me? Amnon said to him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. So Jonadab said to him, Lie down on your bed and pretend to be ill. And when your father comes to see you, say to him, Please, let my sister Tamar come and give me food, and prepare the food in my sight, that I may see it and eat from her hand. Then Amnon lay down and pretended to be ill, and when the king came to see him, Amnon said to the king, Please, let Tamar my sister come and make a couple of cakes for me in my sight, that I may eat from her hand. And David sent home to Tamar, saying, Now go to your brother Amnon's house and prepare food for him. So Tamar went to her brother's house, and he was lying down. Then she took flour and kneaded it, made cakes in his sight and baked the cakes. And she took the pan and placed them out before him, but he refused to eat. Then Amnon said, Have everyone go out from me. And they all went out from him. Then Amnon said to Tamar, Bring the food into the bedroom, that I may eat from your hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made, and brought them to Amnon her brother in the bedroom. Now when she had brought them to him to eat, he took hold of her and said to her, Come, lie with me, my sister. But she answered him, No, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing should be done in Israel. Do not do this disgraceful thing. And I, where could I take my shame? And as for you, you would be like one of the fools in Israel. Now therefore, please speak to the king, for he will not withhold me from you. However, he would not heed her voice, and being stronger than she, he forced her and lay with her. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred with which he hated her was greater than the love with which he had loved her. And Amnon said to her, Arise, be gone. Next, Amnon forcefully took Tamar. 2 Samuel chapter 13, verses 23 to 29. And it came to pass after two full years that Absalom had sheep shearers in Baal Hazor, which is near Ephraim. So Absalom invited all the king's sons. Then Absalom came to the king and said, Kindly note, your servant has sheep shears. Please, let the king and his servants go with your servant. But the king said to Absalom, No, my son, let us not all go now, lest we be a burden to you. Then he urged him, but he would not go, and he blessed him. Then Absalom said, If not, please let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said to him, Why should he go with you? But Absalom urged him. So he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Now Absalom had commanded his servants, saying, Watch now, when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say to you, strike Amnon, then kill him. Do not be afraid. Have I not commanded you? Be courageous and valiant. So the servants of Absalom did to Amnon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and each one got on his mule and fled. Absalom, her brother, slayed Amnon. 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 39 And King David longed to go to Absalom, for he had been comforted concerning Amnon, because he was dead. Then Absalom fled to his mother's homeland, 
David wished to go to Absalom, but he did not. Why not? He'd lost his moral leverage. David paid a high price for failing to step up and be a father figure to his son. 2 Samuel chapter 14 So Joab the son of Zariah perceived that the king's heart was concerned about Absalom. And Joab sent it to Koah and brought from there a wise woman and said to her, Please, pretend to be a mourner and put on mourning apparel. Do not anoint yourself with oil, but act like a woman who has been mourning a long time for the dead. Go to the king and speak to him in this manner. So Joab put the words in her mouth. And when the woman of Tekoa spoke to the king, she fell on her face to the ground and prostrated herself and said, Help, O king. Then the king said to her, What troubles you? And she answered, Indeed, I am a widow. My husband is dead. Now your maidservant had two sons, and the two fought with each other in the field, and there was no one to part them. But the one struck the other and killed him. And now the whole family has risen up against your maidservant, and they said, Deliver him who struck his brother, that we may execute him for the life of his brother whom he killed, and we will destroy the heir also. So they would extinguish my ember that is left, and leave to my husband neither name nor remnant on the earth. Then the king said to the woman, Go to your house and I will give orders concerning you. And the woman of Tekoa said to the king, My lord, O king, let the iniquity be on me and on my father's house, and the king and his throne be guiltless. So the king said, Whoever says anything to you, bring him to me, and he shall not touch you any more. Then she said, Please, let the king remember the Lord your God, and do not permit the avenger of blood to destroy any more, lest they destroy my son. And he said, As the Lord lives, not one hair of your son shall fall to the ground. Therefore the woman said, Please, let your maidservant speak another word to my lord the king. And he said, Say on. So the woman said, Why then have you schemed such a thing against the people of God? For the king speaks this thing as one who is guilty, in that the king does not bring his banished one home again. For he will surely die and become like water spilled on the ground which cannot be gathered up again. Yet God does not take away a life, but he devises means, so that his banished ones are not expelled from him. Now therefore, I have come to speak of this thing to my lord the king, because the people have made me afraid. And your maidservant said, I will now speak to the king, and it may be that the king will permit the request of his maidservant. For the king will hear and deliver his maidservant from the hand of the man who would destroy me and my son together from the inheritance of God. Your maidservant said, The word of my lord the king will now be comforting, for as the angel of God so was my lord the king in discerning good and evil. And may the Lord your God be with you. Then the king answered and said to the woman, Please, do not hide from me anything that I ask you. And the woman said, Please, let my lord the king speak. So the king said, Is the hand of Joab with you in all this? And the woman answered and said, As you live, my lord the king, no one can turn to the right hand or to the left from anything that my lord the king has spoken. For your servant Joab commanded me, and he put all these words in the mouth of your maidservant. To bring about this change of affairs, your servant Joab has done this thing. But my lord is wise, according to the wisdom of the angel of God, to know everything that is in the earth. And the king said to Joab, All right, I have granted this thing. Go therefore, bring back the young man Absalom. Then Joab fell to the ground on his face and bowed himself and thanked the king. And Joab said, Today 
Your servant knows that I have found favor in your sight, my lord, O king, and that the king has fulfilled the request of his servant. So Joab arose and went to Geshur, and brought Absalom to Jerusalem. And the king said, Let him return to his own house, but do not let him see my face. So Absalom returned to his own house, but did not see the king's face. Now in all Israel, there was no one who was praised as much as Absalom for his good looks. From the sole of his foot to the crown of his head, there was no blemish in him. And when he cut the hair of his head at the end of every year, he cut it because it was heavy on him. When he cut it, he weighed the hair of his head at two hundred shekels according to the king's standard. To Absalom were born three sons and one daughter whose name was Tamar. She was a woman of beautiful appearance. And Absalom dwelt two full years in Jerusalem, but did not see the king's face. Therefore Absalom sent for Joab to send him to the king, but he would not come to him. And when he sent him again the second time, he would not come. So he said to his servants, See Joab's field is near mine, and he has barley there. Go and set it on fire. And Absalom's servants set the field on fire. Then Joab arose and came to Absalom's house and said to him, Why have your servants set my field on fire? And Absalom answered Joab, Look, I sent to you, saying, Come here, so that I may send you to the king to say, Why have I come from Geshur? It would be better for me to be there still. Now therefore, let me see the king's face, but if there is iniquity in me, let him execute me. So Joab went to the king and told him, and when he had called for Absalom, he came to the king and bowed himself on his face to the ground before the king. Then the king kissed Absalom. Joab devised two schemes to reunite Absalom and David. 2 Samuel chapter 15 verses 1 to 14 After this, it happened that Absalom provided himself with chariots and horses, and fifty men to run before him. Now Absalom would rise early and stand beside the way to the gate. So it was, whenever anyone who had a lawsuit came to the king for a decision, that Absalom would call to him and say, What city are you from? And he would say, Your servant is from such and such a tribe of Israel. Then Absalom would say to him, Look, your case is good and right, but there is no deputy of the king to hear you. Moreover, Absalom would say, Oh, that I were made judge in the land, and everyone who has any suit or cause would come to me then I would give him justice. And so it was, whenever anyone came near to bow down to him, that he would put his hand and take him and kiss him. In this manner, Absalom acted toward all Israel who came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. Now it came to pass after forty years that Absalom said to the king, Please, let me go to Hebron to pay the vow which I made to the Lord. For your servant took a vow while I dwelt at Geshur in Syria, saying, If the Lord indeed brings me back to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. And the king said to him, Go in peace. So he arose and went to Hebron. Then Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Absalom reigns in Hebron. And with Absalom went two hundred men invited from Jerusalem, and they went along innocently and did not know anything. Then Absalom sent for Ahithophel, the Gilonite, David's counselor from his city from Gilo, while he offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy grew strong for the people of Absalom continually increased in number. Now a messenger came to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are with Absalom. So David said to all his servants who were with him at Jerusalem, Arise, and let us flee, 
or we shall not escape from Absalom. Make haste to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly and bring disaster upon us and strike the city with the edge of the sword. David and Absalom met and appeared to reconcile, but the son's outward actions only concealed his internal rebellion. Absalom usurped the throne after winning the people's favor, forcing David to flee Jerusalem. Ahithophel, David's trusted advisor, joined Absalom's rebellion. 2 Samuel, chapter 16, verses 20 to 23. Then Absalom said to Ahithophel, Give advice as to what we should do. And Ahithophel said to Absalom, Go unto your father's concubines whom he has left to keep the house, and all Israel will hear that you are abhorred by your father. Then the hands of all who are with you will be strong. So they pitched a tent for Absalom on the top of the house, and Absalom went into his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Now the advice of Ahithophel which he gave in those days was as if one had inquired at the oracle of God. So was all the advice of Ahithophel both with David and with Absalom. He urged Absalom to humiliate David's concubines and to demonstrate his contempt for his father. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 3 So David sent and inquired about the woman, and someone said, is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? 2 Samuel, chapter 23, verse 24. Asahel, the brother of Joab, was one of the thirty. Elhanan, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem. Ahithophel may have turned against David as a result of David's actions with his granddaughter Bathsheba and her husband Uriah. 2 Samuel chapter 15 verse 15 through to chapter 16 verse 15. And the king's servants said to the king, We are your servants, ready to do whatever my lord the king commands. Then the king went out with all his household after him. But the king left ten women, concubines to keep the house. And the king went out with all the people after him and stopped at the outskirts that all his servants passed before him, and all the Carathites, all the Pelathites, and all the Gittites. Six hundred men who had followed him from Gath passed before the king. Then the king said to Ittai the Gittite, Why are you also going with us? Return, and remain with the king, for you are a foreigner, and also an exile from your own place. In fact, you came only yesterday. Why should I make you wander up and down with us today? Since I go, I know not where. Return, and take your brethren back. Mercy and truth be with you. But Ittai answered the king and said, As the Lord lives, and as my lord the king lives, surely in whatever place my lord the king shall be, whether in death or life, even there also your servant will be. So David said to Ittai, Go and cross over. Then Ittai the Gittite and all his men, and all the little ones who were with him crossed over. And all the country wept with a loud voice, and all the people crossed over. The king himself also crossed over by the brook Kidron, and all the people crossed over toward the way of the wilderness. There was Zadok also, and all the Levites with him, bearing the ark of the covenant of God. And they set down the ark of God, and Abiathar went up until all the people had finished crossing over from the city. Then the king said to Zadok, Carry the ark of God back into the city. If I find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me back and show me both it and his dwelling place. But if he says thus, I have no delight in you, here I am. Let him do to me as seems good to him. The king also said to Zadok the priest, Are you not a seer? Return to the city in peace, and your two sons with you. Ahimeh is your son, and Jonathan the son of Abiathar. See, 
I will wait in the plains of the wilderness until word comes from you to inform me. Therefore Zadok and Abiathar carried the Ark of God back to Jerusalem, and they remained there. So David went up the ascent of the Mount of Olives, and wept as he went up. And he had his head covered and went barefoot. And all the people who were with him covered their heads and went up, weeping as they went up. Then someone told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. Now it happened when David had come to the top of the mountain where he worshipped God. There was Hushai the archite, coming to meet him with his robe torn and dust on his head. David said to him, If you go on with me, then you will become a burden to me. But if you return to the city and say to Absalom, I will be your servant, O king, as I was your father's servant previously, so I will now also be your servant. Then you may defeat the counsel of Ahithophel for me. And do you not have Zadok and Abiathar the priests with you there? Therefore, it will be that whatever you hear from the king's house, you shall tell Zadok and Abiathar the priests. Indeed, they have there with them their two sons, Ahimea Zadok's son, and Jonathan Abiathar's son. And by them you shall send me everything you hear. So Hushai, David's friend, went into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. When David was a little past the top of the mountain, there was Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, who met him with a couple of saddled donkeys, and on them two hundred loaves of bread, one hundred clusters of raisins, one hundred summer fruits, and a skin of wine. And the king said to Ziba, What do you mean to do with these? So Ziba said, The donkeys are for the king's household to ride on, the bread and summer fruit for the young men to eat, and the wine for those who are faint in the wilderness to drink. Then the king said, And where is your master's son? And Ziba said to the king, Indeed, he is staying in Jerusalem. For he said, Today the house of Israel will restore the kingdom of my father to me. So the king said to Ziba, Here, all that belongs to Mephibosheth is yours. And Ziba said, I humbly bow before you, that I may find favor in your sight, my lord, O king. Now when King David came to Behurim, there was a man from the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera coming from there. He came out, cursing continuously as he came, and he threw stones at David and at all the servants of King David. And all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left. Also Shimei said thus when he cursed, Come out, come out, you bloodthirsty man, you rogue. The Lord has brought upon you all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose place you have reigned. And the Lord has delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom your son. So now you are caught in your own evil, because you are a bloodthirsty man. Then Abishai the son of Zeruiah said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Please, let me go over and take off his head. But the king said, what have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah? So let him curse, because the Lord has said to him, Curse David. Who then shall say, Why have you done so? And David said to Abishai and all his servants, See how my son who came from my own body seeks my life. How much more now may this Benjamite? Let him alone, and let him curse. For so the Lord has ordered him. It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction, and that the Lord will repay me with good for his cursing this day. And as David and his men went along the road, Shimei went along the hillside opposite him, and cursed as he went, threw stones at him and kicked up dust. 
Now the king and all the people who were with him became weary, so they refreshed themselves there. Meanwhile, Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem, and Ahithophel was with him. David encountered encouragement, deception, and scorn as he fled Jerusalem. David left faithful priests, Abiathar and Zadok in Jerusalem as his eyes and ears, and Ittai, who was not even an Israelite, demonstrated loyalty. David delegated to the wise Hushai the task of returning to Jerusalem and pretending to support Absalom. 2 Samuel chapter 16, verse 16, finishing at chapter 17, verse 23. And so it was, when Hushai the archite, David's friend, came to Absalom, that Hushai said to Absalom, Long live the king! Long live the king! So Absalom said to Hushai, Is this your loyalty to your friend? Why did you not go with your friend? And Hushai said to Absalom, No, but whom the Lord and this people and all the men of Israel choose, his I will be, and with him I will remain. Furthermore, whom should I serve? Should I not serve in the presence of his son? As I have served in your father's presence, so will I be in your presence. Then Absalom said to Ahithophel, Give advice as to what we should do. And Ahithophel said to Absalom, Go into your father's concubines, whom he has left to keep the house, and all Israel will hear that you are abhorred by your father. Then the hands of all who are with you will be strong. So they pitched a tent for Absalom on the top of the house, and Absalom went in to his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Now the advice of Ahithophel which he gave in those days was as if one had inquired at the oracle of God. So was all the advice of Ahithophel both with David and with Absalom. Moreover, Ahithophel said to Absalom, Now, let me choose twelve thousand men, and I will arise and pursue David tonight. I will come upon him while he is weary and weak, and make him afraid. And all the people who are with him will flee, and I will strike only the king. Then I will bring back all the people to you. When all return except the man whom you seek, all the people will be at peace. And the saying pleased Absalom and all the elders of Israel. Then Absalom said, Now call Husha the archite also, and let us hear what he says too. And when Hushai came to Absalom, Absalom spoke to him, saying, Ahithophel has spoken in this manner. Shall we do as he says? If not, speak up. So Hushai said to Absalom, The advice that Ahithophel has given is not good at this time. For, said Hushai, You know your father and his men, that they are mighty men, and they are enraged in their minds like a bear robbed of her cubs in the field. And your father is a man of war, and will not camp with the people. Surely by now he is hidden in some pit or in some other place. And it will be when some of them are overthrown at the first, that whoever hears it will say, There is a slaughter among the people who follow Absalom. And even he who is valiant, whose heart is like the heart of a lion, will melt completely. For all Israel knows that your father is a mighty man, and those who are with him are valiant men. Therefore I advise that all Israel be fully gathered to you, from Dan to Beersheba, like the sand that is by the sea for multitude, and that you go to battle in person. So we will come upon him in some place where he may be found, and we will fall on him as the dew falls on the ground. And of him and all the men who are with him, there shall not be left so much as one. Moreover, if he has withdrawn into a city, then all Israel shall bring ropes to that city, and we will pull it into the river, until there is not one small stone found there. 
So Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The advice of Hushai the archite is better than the advice of Ahithophel. For the Lord had purposed to defeat the good advice of Ahithophel, to the intent that the Lord might bring disaster on Absalom. Then Hushai said to Zadok and Abiathar the priests thus, And so Ahithophel advised Absalom and the elders of Israel, And thus and so I have advised. Know therefore, send quickly and tell David, saying, Do not spend this night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily cross over, lest the king and all the people who are with him be swallowed up. Now Jonathan and Ahimea stayed at Enrogel, for they dared not be seen coming into the city. So a female servant would come and tell them, and they would go and tell King David. Nevertheless, a lad saw them and told Absalom. But both of them went away quickly and came to a man's house in Behurim, who had a well in his court, and they went down into it. Then the woman took and spread a covering over the well's mouth and spread ground grain on it, and the thing was not known. And when Absalom's servants came to the woman at the house, they said, Where are Ahimeaz and Jonathan? So the woman said to them, They have gone over the water brook. And when they had searched and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. Now it came to pass, after they had departed, that they came up out of the well, and went and told King David, and said to David, Arise, and cross over the water quickly, for thus has Ahithophel advised against you. So David and all the people who were with him arose and crossed over the Jordan. By morning light, not one of them was left who had not gone over the Jordan. Now when Ahithophel saw that his advice was not followed, he saddled the donkey and arose and went home to his house, to his city. Then he put his household in order and hanged himself and died, and he was buried in his father's tomb. He helped to thwart Absalom's plans as David and his companions continued their journey. Ziba, Mephibosheth's servant, aided and deceived them, lying about Mephibosheth. 2 Samuel chapter 19, verses 24 to 30. Now Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king. And he had not cared for his feet, nor trimmed his mustache, nor washed his clothes, from the day the king departed until he returned in peace. So it was when he had come to Jerusalem to meet the king, that the king said to him, Why did you not go with me, Mephibosheth? And he answered, My lord, O king, my servant deceived me. For your servant said, I will saddle a donkey for myself that I may ride on it and go to the king, because your servant is lame. And he has slandered your servant to my lord the king. But my lord the king is like the angel of God. Therefore do what is good in your eyes. For all my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king. Yet you set your servant among those who eat at your own table. Therefore what right have I still to cry out any more to the king? So the king said to him, Why do you speak any more of your matters? I have said, You and Ziba divide the land. Then Mephibosheth said to the king, Rather, let him take it all, inasmuch as my lord the king has come back in peace to his own house. He informed David that his son, whom he had raised, had turned against him. Shimei, Saul's relative, then arrived and basically told David that he was getting everything he deserved. David accepted Shimei's curses as coming from the Lord. 2 Samuel chapter 17 verse 24 through to chapter 18 verse 33. Then David went to Mahanaim, and Absalom crossed over the Jordan, he and all the men of Israel with him. And Absalom made Amasa captain of the army instead of Joab. This Amasa was the son of a man whose name was Jithra, 
an Israelite, who had gone into Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, sister of Zeruiah, Joab's mother. So Israel and Absalom encamped in the land of Gilead. Now it happened when David had come to Mahanaim, that Shobai, the son of Nahash from Rabbah, of the people of Ammon, Machir, the son of Emil from Lodabar, and Barzillai, the Gileadite from Rogalim, brought beds and basins, earthen vessels and wheat, barley and flour, parched grain and beans, lentils and parched seeds, honey and curds, sheep and cheese of the herd, for David and the people who were with him to eat. For they said, The people are hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. And David numbered the people who were with him, and set captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them. Then David sent out one-third of the people under the hand of Joab, one-third under the hand of Abishai the son of Zeruiah, Joab's brother, and one-third under the hand of Ittai the Gittite. And the king said to the people, I also will surely go out with you myself. But the people answered, You shall not go out. For if we flee away, they will not care about us, nor if half of us die will they care about us. But you are worth ten thousand of us now, for you are now more help to us in the city. Then the king said to them, Whatever seems best to you I will do. So the king stood beside the gate, and all the people went out by hundreds and by thousands. Now the king had commanded Joab, Abishai, and Iddai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave all the captain's orders concerning Absalom. So the people went out into the field of battle against Israel. And the battle was in the woods of Ephraim. The people of Israel were overthrown there before the servants of David and a great slaughter of twenty thousand took place there that day. For the battle there was scattered over the face of the whole countryside, and the woods devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. Then Absalom met the servants of David. Absalom rode on a mule. The mule went under the thick boughs of a great terebinth tree, and his head caught in the terebinth so he was left hanging between heaven and earth, and the mule which was under him went on. Now a certain man saw it and told Joab and said, I just saw Absalom hanging in a terebinth tree. So Joab said to the man who told him, You just saw him? And why did you not strike him there to the ground? I would have given you ten shekels of silver and a belt. But the man said to Joab, Though I were to receive a thousand shekels of silver in my hand, I would not raise my hand against the king's son. For in our hearing the king commanded you and Abishai and Iddai, saying, Beware, lest anyone touch the young man Absalom. Otherwise, I would have dealt falsely against my own life. For there is nothing hidden from the king, and you yourself would have set yourself against me. Then Joab said, I cannot linger with you. And he took three spears in his hand and thrust them through Absalom's heart, while he was still alive in the midst of the terebinth tree. And ten young men who bore Joab's armor surrounded Absalom and struck and killed him. So Joab blew the trumpet, and the people returned from pursuing Israel. For Joab held back the people, and they took Absalom and cast him into a large pit in the woods and laid a very large heap of stones over him. Then all Israel fled, everyone to his tent. Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and set up a pillar for himself, which is in the king's valley. For he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. He called the pillar after his own name, and to this day it is called Absalom's Monument. Then Ahimeaz the son of Zadok said, Let me run now and take the news to the king, how the Lord has avenged him of his enemies. And Joab said to him, 
you shall not take the news of this day, for you shall take the news another day. But today you shall take no news, because the king's son is dead. Then Joab said to the Cushite, Go tell the king what you have seen. So the Cushite bowed himself to Joab and ran. And Ahimeaz the son of Zadok said to Joab, But whatever happens, please let me also run after the Cushite. So Joab said, Why will you run, my son, since you have no news ready? But whatever happens, he said, let me run. So he said to him, Run. Then Ahimeaz ran by the way of the plain, and outran the Cushite. Now David was sitting between the two gates, and the watchman went up to the roof over the gate to the wall, lifted his eyes and looked, and there was a man running alone. Then the watchman cried out and told the king, and the king said, If ye is alone, there is no news in his mouth. And he came rapidly and drew near. Then the watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called the gatekeeper and said, There is another man running alone. And the king said, He also brings news. So the watchman said, I think the running of the first is like the running of Ahimeaz, the son of Zadok. And the king said, He is a good man, and comes with good news. So Ahimeaz called out and said to the king, all is well. Then he bowed down with his face to the earth before the king and said, Blessed be the Lord your God, who has delivered up the men who raised their hand against my lord the king. The king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? Ahimeaz answered, When Joab sent the king's servant and me your servant, I saw a great tumult but I did not know what it was about. And the king said, Turn aside and stand here. So he turned aside and stood still. Just then the Cushite came, and the Cushite said, There is good news, my lord the king, for the Lord has avenged you this day of all those who rose against you. And the king said to the Cushite, Is the young man Absalom safe? So the Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king, and all who rise against you to do harm, be like that young man. Then the king was deeply moved, and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said thus, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, if only I had died in your place, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Absalom's rebellion culminated in a battle between his supporters and David's supporters. During the fighting, Absalom's hair became entangled in a tree. Despite David's request for mercy, Joab slew him. The uprising was over. David was devastated when he learned that his son had died. He had to have realized that his own sin had resulted in Absalom's death. Number 2. David's Fractured Return 2 Samuel chapter 19, verses 1-4 to And Joab was told, Behold, the king is weeping and mourning for Absalom. So the victory that day was turned into mourning for all the people. For the people heard it said that day, The king is grieved for his son. And the people stole back into the city that day, as people who are ashamed steal away when they flee in battle. But the king covered his face, and the king cried out with a loud voice, O oh, my son Absalom, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. In his grief and anguish, David seemed to forget that his son's rebellion had claimed the lives of 20,000 people. 2 Samuel chapter 19 Verses 5 to 7. Then Joab came into the house to the king and said, Today you have disgraced all your servants who today have saved your life, the lives of your sons and daughters, the lives of your wives and the lives of your concubines, 
and that you love your enemies and hate your friends. For you have declared today that you regard neither princes nor servants. For today I perceive that if Absalom had lived and all of us had died today, then it would have pleased you well. Now therefore arise, go out and speak comfort to your servants. For I swear by the Lord, if you do not go out, not one will stay with you this night, and that will be worse for you than all the evil that has befallen you from your youth until now. When Joab learned of David's grief, he delivered the harsh words the king required. 2 Samuel chapter 19 verse 8 Then the king arose and sat in the gate, and they told all the people, saying, There is a king sitting in the gate. So all the people came before the king, for every one of Israel had fled to his tent. David sat at the gate to demonstrate his readiness to resume his role as king. 2 Samuel chapter 19, verses 9 to 15. Now all the people were in a dispute throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, The king saved us from the hand of our enemies. He delivered us from the hand of the Philistines and now he has fled from the land because of Absalom. But Absalom, whom we anointed over us, has died in battle. Now therefore, why do you say nothing about bringing back the king? So King David sent to Zadok and Abiathar the priest, saying, Speak to the elders of Judah, saying, Why are you the last to bring the king back to his house, since the words of all Israel have come to the king to his very house? You are my brethren, you are my bone and my flesh. Why then are you the last to bring back the king? And say to Amasa, Are you not my bone and my flesh? God do so to me, and more also, if you are not commander of the army before me continually in place of Joab. So we swayed the hearts of all the men of Judah, just as the heart of one man, so that they sent this word to the king, Return you and all your servants. Then the king returned and came to the Jordan, and Judah came to Gilgal to go to meet the king, to escort the king across the Jordan. Even after Absalom was slain, David was unable to return to Jerusalem until everyone agreed to restore him as king. These chapters recount David's final years in power. Despite living with the consequences of his sin, David continued to praise the Lord. This bears witness to God's goodness, power, and deliverance. David thanked the Lord for delivering him and blessing him in all his troubles and difficulties. David's life was riddled with flaws and sins. So what made him a man after God's own heart? He was openly dependent on God. When David sinned, he openly confessed and received forgiveness from the Lord. He truly repented and accepted the consequences of his sins. What will be said about our lives after we are no longer here? May we have David's heart to the Lord, and may we be God's servants in our own generation.